I often make videos from my bedroom and you probably think that I just have one set of bed sheets. Like that's not true. Three of them are the same. So, so today I'm going to tell you what fetishes I have myself. Because I feel like our women should talk about it more. I mean, women who work in this sphere, yeah, doms. Because if you don't speak about your needs, how are they going to guess? Plus, I want to attract only people who match my fetishes. Shh, stop! Because femdom is about serving a dom, serving this dominant woman and making it about her. And I think I even came to the point where I don't even do fam dom sessions that often. Uh, so first of all, yeah, like it comes with an initial tribute, then we talk and then I make it about myself. And later on, if we establish a long-term connection, if I see that this submissive is worthy of my attention, are then I will start asking him, yeah, what do you want? Because I want submissive men to come and serve me for who I am, for what I am, for what I do, for what I like. Um, because I'm not a fetish provider. Even if you see most doms in this way, I'm not a fetish provider. Like, I'm not here to cater for your fetishes. And this is the main rule of femdom and fiendom. And since I said fiendom, that would be the first fetish I'm gonna tell you about. Uh, I'm not going to describe it in general, yeah, what it is. I have another video what fiendom is, what fiendom really is, yeah, and what it's not. Pixie. She's a little annoying, but she will come down, I think already so are uh, i'm going to tell you how i perceive it i mean obviously all my videos about my perception but why i like fiendom because fiendom it's like a religious act when someone comes to you with a tribute because i feel like i'm a goddess sitting somewhere very high and they come to me yeah and they put this tribute to my altar so this is what they brought to me. So this is the first aspect. The second aspect is my love language is an uh, acts of services and gifts. So basically money, yeah, because acts of services, it's not that you serve me like in the toilet, okay? I mean, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't, good, it doesn't bring anything good to me. Acts of services is when you make someone's life easier. And money, it's the easiest and the fastest way to show that you care for this person. Uh, and also, okay, fiendom, it's a fetish, it's a kink. And those people who say that it's not, they just make me laugh. Like recently I get a message, I often get messages like from vanilla guys who see me somewhere on dating apps and they're like, oh, hey, mistress, how can I serve you? I want to serve you. I'm like, man. You don't know what you're getting into. Like, you really think that I'm going to like dress up in latex, yeah, come with a whip. And I'm like, yeah, all for your pleasure. That's catering for your fetishes because that's not what I want. I cannot even possibly think of dominating anyone without getting something for myself. Mm, I try to have a submissive without mm, any monetary sacrifices. It doesn't work. I don't feel it like I feel um, that's actually a very common story uh, I hear it all the time how someone tells me yeah I tried to play with the Dom no she didn't charge me nothing like that she also wanted to explore and then these Doms they just ghosted them each time it's the same story they just ghost them and you know why I've been there when like before i started doing this professionally i decided to try it for the first time online and i liked one sub we started talking yeah and um, 
it's a lot of energy that you give to a person because a submissive man is a very needy man that's almost like having a child if you are connected like often and if you don't get anything in response except oh goddess i belong to you give me a task give me a task give me a task if you don't get anything you are just drained are dominating someone is like a teaching job it's like i often compare it to teaching and are given therapy because i used to work as a teacher and i know that teaching even if you enjoy it is draining so our another aspect is that you can explore your bitchy side yeah your mean side that you don't say, oh, thank you for sending me this money, how it would be in real life, yeah, with women. And when a man gives you some money, your women are like, oh yeah, thank you. And men becomes more powerful in this situation. But that's a power shift here. Like he gives you money actually, because he, like seriously, someone is drilling. I hope it's not gonna last long. So he gives you money because he is weak for you. And there is no way you're gonna say, oh, thank you. Because this is him who is supposed to thank you for taking his loser money, for being in your presence, because your presence is not free. Your presence is expensive. You are expensive. Everyone wants to worship a woman who is gorgeous, but do you know that being gorgeous is expensive? It's not enough to be beautiful by nature. Do you know how much I pay for my nails? Do you know how much I pay for my toes, for my hair, for my makeup, for my clothes? And also therapy, massages, facial massages, and all this stuff that makes my life stress-free because I have a stressful life despite of what you think. Um, so even if I act like I live stress-free life as a dom, yeah, this is a play we all have struggles, we all have responsibilities. So when someone tells me that Dom is not a fetish, I'm like, why? And they really don't understand that some men are not like mentally ill to do this. Because most men think that men who are into Dom are mentally ill, that something wrong happened to them, that they need help and like cruel dom is going to drain them, take their money. I mean, a dom has to be responsible, especially with long-term subs. Like with those who come for once, like honestly, that's not your responsibility. And, but here is the thing that a submissive is the main person who is responsible for his own money because doms do not tax subs. Hey, give me your money. I mean, yes, you can see a lot of these messages on Twitter, but these are fake accounts and these are baby doms who don't understand how to do this. Real doms never slide into subs DM asking for money. That's disgusting. Like that's that's horrible. That has to be excluded from Findom community because you just ruin the reputation of real doms. So when a man comes to you and he wants to give you his money, why would I deny him from having this pleasure? I noticed that this is so hard for people to believe that both sides get aroused. A woman who is into Findom, she gets sexual pleasure when she receives money. Okay, me, 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 I'm talking about myself. I get turned on when someone sends me a tribute, especially when they show that I don't want anything in response. That's just the biggest privilege in my life to give you at least something. This is sexy. This is, I would say, it, it's almost like a sexual act, you know, or but a virtual sexual act, for example, or yeah, I always use this concept and many doms use it, yeah, that you drain his wallet, not his testicles. And this is how you exchange sexual energy. And you will see like 
all mm, these tweets, oh, I'm getting so wet, yeah, like receiving the money. It happens, like it happens, that's true. This happens to me. So when you see a CBT session, you don't say, oh, poor sub, this dom is so cruel, what is she doing to him? Because you kind of understand that this man is into pain, yeah, he wants pain. But with money, it's a little bit different. Oh no, this man must be sick. So stop, stop doing this. Oh no, Ala, you stop doing this because I'm trying to get out of my teaching position right now. But I always try to educate people, even if the purpose of this video is to tell you about me myself. Stop drilling! Together with Findom, like I, I wouldn't say that it's the second fetish, but together with Vindama, like goddess worship, because I myself believe in great goddess. I myself pray to great goddess. Yes, this is my, um, let's say new religion. I'm still on the way because I'm curious. Yeah, like, no, actually I'm agnostic, but believing in divine femininity, it became something really interesting and fulfilling for me and i see women as the embodiment of great goddess on earth and each woman each woman's body is a temple that you worship and you treat a woman like a goddess it's just the problem yeah that some women don't know that they are goddesses uh, and the behavior of when a woman knows her worth knows that she's a goddess she's gonna attract those people who worship goddess so yeah goddess worship not only like that yeah your goddess i'm worshiping you i also like religious play or so-called blasphemy but i'd like to say that that's not blasphemy your religion is blasphemy so i like having religious guys on their knees praying to me and calling my mm, sweet body parts the real god so yeah this is really exciting because you can see that religion is a really strong thing for lots of people so when you change their confession even if it's in a play you feel i feel so much power um on the one hand on another hand it pleases me as someone who is against patriarchal religions. Yeah. My next fetish is poetry. And not only poetry. I just like men who are good with their words, who are good at putting their thoughts. And their thoughts also have to be quite sophisticated into words. And sometimes if I notice that someone has a talent, I make them write poetry for me or an essay, or I can give them a task, give me 10 sophisticated compliments, like unusual compliments, not, hey, you're sexy, hey, you're beautiful, hey, you're gorgeous. Like this, this is not attractive. I mean, you can compensate it with fin down play, but, yeah, speaking, writing is very important to me because I like writing myself, I like educating myself, I like reading, and I like intelligent, submissive men. So, yeah, I would call this fetish like fetish for intelligence. <laughs> Another fetish that I have is all types of sexual control. I love tease and denial. I like giving jerk off instructions, but when I'm in the mood for this, you know, I are again, I wouldn't do it for like a random man, I don't know, like watching someone like uh, 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 I used to do it, I mean I, I tried it many times, but it's just now I'm somewhere like at the point of my life where like I don't need to do something just like if I feel like oh okay I'm gonna do this or like if I feel indifferent I want each play to be out of my 
personal desire and i think that's that's yeah that's beautiful for both sides as for orgasm and erasal control yeah it's not just edging i also like forced orgasm ruined orgasm um, i like giving a mantra when something intense happens because this is how it's it imprints in your mind in your brain and makes you even more submissive i am into therapy play i love therapy a lot i love psychotherapy i like i had another youtube channel about mental health disorders and i really like talking to neurodivergent people so and i already made videos yeah about the connection like uh how femdom can help with anxiety and this is what i like doing this is my personal theme i love seeing the progress i love doing like deep work and i often say that femdom with the right dom and with the right sub that's like the responsibility is not only on the dom can work like therapy uh so yeah that's what i like doing i play a therapist like i don't have a license obviously but at least i found a sphere where i can explore some of my influence on people and to see how fetish play can affect their life in a positive way as for bondage i like movement restrictions uh and my favorite thing about it is not using some devices i actually like the power of my body i'm very flexible i have long legs and long arms and i really like when i have like zero tools because actually at the beginning like a long time ago i didn't want to join any bdsm communities because i felt like you use too much stuff <laughs> i don't know why like it's uh i like mental dominance and physical dominance when it's just me it's just my pure force of nature of my body and the body of the submissive man and the power of my mind and of my voice of my words of my beauty of my character so yeah mm, as for pain i like like my favorite thing is probably to slap someone's face this is what i love also i like cbt Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that I like some extreme CBD, but if I talk like what I enjoy myself, what turns me on, yeah, it is uh, slapping a penis and balls again with my hand. And then to continue this speech, I would like to divide submissive men are, who are in my life into those submissive who stay like always below me and those uh, men I have sexual interactions with because that's the main thing. I do not submit to man in my sexual life. I like cuckolding, but I do not submit to any bull. There is no bull in my cuckolding scenario. The second man is also submissive to me, or he can be vanilla, but he does not dominate me. This is he's here for my pleasure and he's just luckier than you yeah because he is better than you yeah and i just chose him for my personal entertainment but like there is no bull there is no dominant man i don't believe in alpha males i don't accept them in my life for me a good man is a submissive man i like the scenario like dominant in social sphere at work submissive to a woman submissive at home so in my own sexual life i like those men who just want to please me and here one of my favorite things is our human sex toy should i explain what it means he has no right to move and i do whatever i want so in my personal life as a guest i just like men who provide protect and please 
the 3P rule. When a man cooks for you, when a man takes you for dinners, when a man does all this gentleman stuff, opens the doors for you, or moves the chair, etc. So this is what I like. This is the bare minimum standard, and I don't go for less. I often say that there is a big difference between submissiveness and sexual preferences. Sexual preferences, you do it for yourself. You just want this strong woman to peg you or do whatever to you, yeah? You just give her your power. Uh, but real submissiveness is not about you. <laughs> That's about pleasing her. And this is what I like in men. And again, a reminder, I'm trying to change the concept of submissiveness. A masculine man is a submissive man. I want to dominate men, masculine men. This is, this is a big turn on for me when a grown-up man, preferably big, strong, and handsome, successful in life, when he bows to you, this is a big thing that turns me on. Yeah, there are some things that I also do and I also can enjoy them, but I wanted to talk about it like the main things that make me aroused, that make me feel this power. And power is like, like a drug. That's why you have to control it. That's why you have to scan yourself all the time. Am I doing this right? But actually this advice is, is more for men because men do more harm when they are in power. And you know what I mean. Look at the world right now. For women, I think that they have to embrace their power. Women are already strong and powerful. Some of them just have to realize it. And if you want to be a good sub to your woman or to your dom, who is also a woman, but she's not your woman, uh, if you want to be good submissive, make it about her. And if you come to me, obviously make it about me. I'm gonna leave my Twitter name on here. And if you find me on Twitter, you will see the link in my bio. You can click it and you will see like some other resources, my private content page and also my payment methods. Uh, like in case you want to submit, you can read me on Twitter. You can follow me on Instagram, uh, subscribe to my oil fans. And if you come to me, asking to serve me, just keep it in mind that you do this for me and you are here to cater for my fetishes. <laughs> okay, have a good day, good night, good life, stay sane, kneel and pray, goodbye. I don't know why, what, what exactly I did, but bye. <laughs>